I'm not pulling out of the driveway. We all know what that means. It's time for the Drive to Work Coronavirus Edition. So we have another interview for you today. Uh, Elaine Chase is here, and Elaine has done a little of everything at Wizard. So we're going to walk through all, all the sort, of, all the stuff she's done. She's done lots of different things. Um, and also, so Elaine, hello. Hello, hi Mark, hi listeners. Okay, so I'm going to ask you the question I've been asking everybody when we start here: is how did you learn to play Magic? Okay, so it was the summer before my senior year in college, which was 1994. Um, and I had a job, a summer job, like most most people do. Um, and I was the lifeguard at a Holiday Inn for the indoor pool weekday shift. Um, and the thing to know about this Holiday Inn weekday is that it was a business clientele mostly in the weekdays. So like literally I would sit there from 10 in the morning till five at night and like maybe one person came into the pool like once. So I sat there and stared at an empty indoor pool for like 40 hours a week. Um, and I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> so um, so I, I got a copy of Games Magazine. Um, and in this issue of Games Magazine, which was probably like the, I don't know, May, June, June, you know, 1994 edition, um, there was a review of this game called Magic the Gathering and an ad and an editorial, like an article about it. There's, uh, and it was just, it looked really interesting. Um, and so my... Uh, my my boyfriend at the time, now now my husband um, of 20 years, um, we just had our anniversary very recently. Congratulations. Um, uh, we, thank you. Um, so we uh, he, he looked at it and we looked at it and it's like we played a lot of games. We played a lot of card games. It was like, hey, this looks really interesting. Like, this, this looks kind of cool. I wonder what we should do. Um, so I come home from work the next day um, and he just hands me, he hands me uh, one of those starter decks um, and just hands it to me. It says, open it up pull out the rule book and the rule book was, you know, like the six point font, like, you know, hundred page rule book. He's like, read this whole thing cover to cover and don't ask me any questions because I have no idea. And then we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we learned how to play magic. Just the two of us reading out of a revised edition starter deck rule book. Um, and we were just hooked like instantly. Like we just, we just fell in love with it instantly. Okay. So um, the first time I think we met, was in fact this was caught on tape nonetheless is uh you were in line for the first pro tour and i was doing the video for it so i was walking down the line interviewing people and i interviewed yep. you in line and that actually is in that there's a tape we made for the very first pro tour and me interviewing you is for the two seconds whatever it is, it is in that tape yes that is there it is in that tape it's you and me we were much younger then <laughs> but I, um, that's the first time I, I i think i ever met you i believe um, I think we might have met at maybe Origins '95. Um, we might have met then. That was possible because um, that was that was February '96. So there's a chance that we met at Origins '95, or at least I saw you and knew who you were. Um, it was funny, by the way. I have a funny, funny story from that that Origins. Uh, Richard was there and he was signing things, um, and so we were in line to get Richard to sign some stuff. Richard Garfield, um, by the way, for the, those that don't know who you mean. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Later. Richard Garfield. <laughs> um, so Richard Garfield was there. He was signing some things. Um, and he was there, and there were, like, some artists that were signing things. Uh, and so there's, there, there's, like, this kid in front of us, and, like, he had just been going to all the artists, being like, what do you draw? And, like, you know, pull that card out of his, you know, box, you know, because there weren't that many cards at that time. He was like, oh, oh, this one. Okay, sign this one then. And he went up to Richard, and he goes, so, so what cards did you do? And Richard just looks at him and blinks and goes, all of them. <laughs> and the kid's like scratching his head and he starts flipping through his cards. And he like, what, all of them? He's like, yeah, all of them. So he's just flipping through his cards again. He's like, did, did you do the backs? He's like, no. <laughs> and so finally, like Richard's just having a ball. And I'm like, I just pity on the skin. I lean forward and I'm like, it's Richard Garfield. He designed the whole game. And the kid's like, oh, um. And he just reached out and shook his hand and then like walked away. <laughs> Okay, so you came to the first Pro Tour. Yes. Um, and, and now with that, so for those that don't know, New York had a pretty big scene back in the back in the day. Like it was one of the first cities that actually had regular tournament play. You know, because if you go back into '94, that wasn't something that happened yep. a lot all, all across the country. Um, yep. And then, okay, so how did you get from playing the first Pro Tour to coming to work at Wizards? How, how did that happen? Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, so I played a lot, um, and and I I played in two pro tours, um, including the first one, which was awesome. Um, but uh, one, so my my problem with playing in New York is that, as you said, it was a really hotbed for competitive magic play. Like so many future Hall of Famers came out of the New York area, um, and you know associate areas like people come down from Boston, right? And you know, people come up from you know Pennsylvania. Um, so the competition was really really hard. Um, and I was a good player. Um, but like, I, I'm not, you know, nowhere near Hall of Fame material or even winning a Pro Tour material. Um, so most of my play would be like, oh, I go like 4-0 and, and then I play against John Finkel and lose. And then I play against Steve OMS and lose, right? Like, um, like that was my life, right? Like just, you know, I kept hitting, like I was in that, you know, constantly, you know, sometimes I hit top eight, but, you know, mostly in that 9-16 to 16 player um, because the competition was so, so tough. Um, so one day, Brian David Marshall, um, who, who ran the events, he said to me, he's like, you know, like, you'd make a lot more money if you helped me run these things instead of playing in them. And I looked at him and I said, God damn you, Brian. <laughs> Cause he was totally right. Um, and so, uh, so I, I started working um, for gray matter, um, which was a kind of a sister company to neutral ground um, that ran all those tournaments. Um, and, and, and my husband did too. Um, so I, I became a, a high level judge. I was a level three judge. Um, and um, you know, he, he helped organize. Um, and so we would run all these events Um and so then uh, in like January um, 90, sorry, December, like 98, um, uh, the guy who certified me for my level three, um, he got a, a judge, there. level three of your judging. Just so. Yeah, level three judging. Yeah. Um, thank you for, for telling me to <laughs> pull things out. My level three judge, um, uh, Jeff Donay, um, he, uh, he got his job at Wizards in the organized play team. Um, and I contacted him I'm like, hey, congratulations. Um, and, uh, you know, what's happening with this other guy's job, um, who is Jason Carl, who previously had been the, the manager of like the DCI. Um, and he had moved into a job in D&D R&D. Um, and so his job was open, too. I'm like, so are, what are you doing with Jason's job? And he's like, send me send me a resume. I was like, OK. Um, <laughs> so I was I was substitute teaching at the time. I, had, I have a degree in elementary education. Um, and I was just, you know, just, you know, a couple years out of college. So I was still doing my substitute rotation. Um, and so like this job came up and I, we drove across the country with everything we owned in a U-Haul in the back of a car in January and got stuck in snow twice um, and came out. And that was that was 21 years ago. OK, so the first job you had was working for the DCI. Yes. Yep. Uh, so I so I, I was the DCI tournament manager. So I did things like the floor rules. So like I wrote like the definition of shuffling, like what that meant, like, you know, it, it, you know all those different things. Um, and then the most fun part of that job, though, was I also investigated cheaters um, and uh, cheaters and like people who did fraud for tournaments. Um, in fact, Mark, if you remember, I worked very closely with your wife, Laura, yes, you um, who also <laughs> happened to be there at the time. <laughs> And she would feed me like these sketchy tournaments. Like she'd be like, "Hey, Lane, I don't think this one looks right." And she'd like, you know, feed over this tournament, and like I, I give him a call, and yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, you worked you worked in uh, in events in the DCI. Yep. Okay, but then you moved to another department. What department did you move to? I moved to R and D, and in fact, I sat right kind of next to you, like diagonal across the, in the pit, like right across the same table from you. Yeah, you might be years. the only person that worked with both Laura and me at the company. Is that true? <laughs> I mean, that worked with both. I mean, we both were at the company, but we were in different sections. Yeah. So, am I the only one who actually worked directly with both of you? Char like, Charlie, Char Charlie, Charlie Catino might be the other person because he ran I events for a little while. Charlie, Charlie probably did too, but I literally sat like next to both of you. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> uh, not a lot of people can say that. So, okay, so in R and D, no. what did you do in R and D? Okay, so I did a whole lot of stuff in R and D. Um, so I I did magic um, development. Um, I was a magic developer, so I developed sets from odyssey through eighth edition i want to say so like i did kamigawa and i did mirrodin and um legions and like a whole bunch of other stuff um i'm just rattling off some random set names um i was the r d rep on magic online like for the first like launch like way way back when um i worked on like the xbox battlegrounds game like i was the r d rep on that um i was on the rules committee so um i actually helped design phasing that was one of my my claims to fame. Not fate, sorry, not phasing. Um, morph. God damn it, morph, morph. Sorry, <laughs> rules committee. We designed morph. Um, yes. So uh, that 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 that, that I, was I remember. The biggest, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was probably the biggest <laughs> mechanic I had. We designed morph because we were revising the rules to illusionary mask and camouflage. And that's, that's what happened. Right and camouflage. 
Yeah, and camouflage. And yeah. we're like, okay, we're revising this. And we're like, hey, you know, you can make a whole mechanic out of this. Um, so so that so we so we did morph. Um and then um uh, so and I was on the beginner games council um because I was also um lead on a whole bunch of licensed trading card games. So um I did a whole bunch of magic work, but I also did I did maybe more work um outside of magic. Um, doing things like I was the the lead developer for the Harry Potter trading card game and the Neopets trading card game. Um, and there's a European football game and there's a whole bunch of um, like Cartoon Network kids shows that we did. Um, so there, there, there was just uh, the Simpsons, right? Like there was just this huge number of licensed trading card games at the time. Um, and, and I led or participated in most of them. OK, can you can you I can think of one team that we were both on together. Can you can we you... were both on the Neopets team. Oh, we were on the New York design team. We made this awesome, awesome game, and then they just threw it away and made something else. We threw it away. We never used it. We never used it. It was this amazing <laughs> game, and it was so it had all these little puzzles in it and everything. It was so super cool. Um, and then we threw it completely threw it away and went with like a more traditional TCG battle game, um, which was still fun and good. But it 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 was yeah. we had a completely other game. So um, what we magic? On, what magic team were you and I together? Well, we're on Simpsons also. Uh, all I did for The Simpsons was I ordered the names of the uh, creature types to be the funniest they could be. That's what I did for Simpsons. Oh, yeah, okay. That's fair. <laughs> That's all right. all, that is all I did on The Simpsons. Is I, I just ordered. <laughs> it's funnier if it's brat before whatever, you know. So, um. <laughs> was there, what other team? Was there another game that we were on? No, well, I mean, I'm talking about Magic. What, what Magic team were we on oh, together? What, what Magic team were we on I, together? I remember one team we were on together. It wasn't... It, <laughs> It wasn't Kamigawa. It was Champions of Kamigawa <laughs> Development. So was, I was. Was I, it like round? That it was like round four of Kamigawa Development, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I, all I know is I didn't. I, I wasn't on the design team of any of the Kamigawa sets, but I was on the development team for Champions of Kamigawa, and in that I made Splice. I, I, yeah. I, I Rich and I made Splice yeah. and the um the cards that the yeah. flip cards that was the and one where you weren't on design because that was weird because that was one of the only sets that I was actually in on design for and you weren't in on design. No, for I, I didn't. I, the whole block I didn't do design. Yeah. The, the 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 thing about Kamigawa is um if you remember I'm sure you do we had to read we redesigned it like I don't know four or five times like completely like redesigned the whole set like we kept designing it and being like this isn't working and we throw it away and like start over again. And then we design it again and then like throw that away and start over again. Do you, do you remember? <laughs> I, I, I had a thing that I kept saying. Do you remember the thing I kept saying during the whole? I had like a thing that mattered to me and during the whole the development, which is what is this set about? Is it about a war? Is it what is it about? And then like I kept and then at some point we like, it's about legends. Okay, well if it's about legends, then we'll do this, 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 you know, so. Yep. I remember I remember two specific things about Kamigawa development. Um, one is we, we, we commandeered a meeting room and we put like the names of every legend on index cards and we like taped them all up to the wall in like how they were related to each other. Like yeah. who, who really was related to each other and who wasn't. Um, that was a big wall and stuff kept moving. And at the end, I don't think it actually even mattered very much. Um, <laughs> no. but, then, <laughs> but then the other thing is the thing I'm probably most proud of um, working on in Magic from a card standpoint was um, the whole development team. So you were there and I was there. Um, so we locked ourselves in the danger room, which was a meeting room right offside the pit. Um, which actually used to be Richard Garfield's old office. Um, but we locked ourselves in the room because we're like, the set is like, it really needs like some oomph. Um, and we just, the development team designed the dragon cycle. Um, like we just locked ourselves in a room for a yeah, day. I remember designed that. all the dragons. Yeah. Yeah, we, we wanted you to attack with them. <laughs> yeah. I think the original design was like, you you could tap to do some effect. And I'm like, you could attack with this giant thing or tap it and do something. I'm like, what? What's that? So I remember that. <laughs> But here's a real quick story. You mentioned the Danger Room just for a, a fun behind the scenes. The history of the Danger Room is uh, they gave Richard Garfield an office, but he didn't want an office. He wanted to sit in the pit. He didn't want an office. And so, but they said that he deserved an office. So he turned it into this meeting room that wasn't on the grid so no one could schedule it. So we tended to use it because it, it would never, like, you always knew you could use it. Uh, and, and a lot of playtesting went on there and stuff, so... Yeah, it was right, oh. and it was right next to where we were all sitting, so it was super convenient. It was small though; it only hit fit like four people. Um, it was tiny. And now, every time we've moved, we've we've had a new danger room. The current danger room is one of those tiny little glass rooms on the third floor. Anyway, <laughs> is it really? Yeah, the danger <laughs> room has fallen, like, and, and like, it's like into, like, do a yeah, it fits two people. It's a little tiny glass thing fits two people. The danger room has fallen. Yep. It, it's not what it yep. once was. Okay. I was, I was actually, sorry, I I'm, I'm, can take all the time with random stories. I was actually in the danger room when we had that really big earthquake. Remember that really yeah, big earthquake? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. 
Yeah, so we had a really, it was like a seven point something earthquake that hit um, in, I, I don't remember when it was, 2000 maybe, 2001. Yeah, but in the old building. Like, what? In the old building. Yeah, in the old building. Yeah. Um, and I was in the danger room for some meeting. Maybe it was a common guy meeting, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> and I just remember like hearing this like thump, 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 thump. And it would like get faster and louder. And the first thought that came into my head was that Scaff must be running down the hallway. And I'm like, why is Scaff running down the hallway? And then I realized, no, no, that, that that's bigger than Scaff. <laughs> and it was it was just, it was the earthquake, right? And so like, you know, we're looking out the the the, the little door. You know, I braced myself in the doorway like I'd been taught on the East Coast for, you know, um, earthquakes that I had never been in. Um, and I didn't realize um, until afterwards that actually that wasn't a real doorway. It was just one of those like fake, you know, meeting room prop up doorways. So yeah. that was actually not very safe at all. <laughs> and by the way, if you want to hear more from Scaff, I did an interview with Scaff. You guys can listen to Scaff Elias, one of the <laughs> original play testers, started the Pro Tour and did all sorts of stuff. Um, OK, so you were in R&D for a while. But wait, you moved on from R&D. Where did you I go next? A long, long time ago. Um, so I, I had because I did all that work on those licensed trading card games. Um, I, I, I had already had built up a whole lot of relationships with all of the business folks on the licensor sides, right? So like, I was the person who was maintaining most of the relationships, like with the folks at like WB for Harry Potter and like at the Neopets office and like at you know at the Simpsons office. Um, and so um, a, an opportunity came up for me to go over into the brand team. Um, as an associate brand manager um, at, for the licensed trading card games. Uh, and it was, um, I'll admit it was super scary. Um, and it was a really hard choice because I, I, at the time I was I, like, I was a lead, like I was a lead developer in all these, all these products. Um, and so I, I took this lead job in R&D um, to kind of take a step like sideways and backwards into a, like an associate um brand manager position. Um, and for those of you who aren't really in the corporate world, just so you know, like like kind of the levels of like brand management and other roles, like you start like assistant is the low level, you go to like assistant and then associate, and then you're like a normal brand manager, right? And then you're senior brand manager. So it was a low level brand job. Um, and not like, magic originally. A, yeah, yeah, com coming from a lead in, um, in R&D. Um, and uh, it was the best career move I ever made. Because um, I mean, R&D was the best job for the time in my career and the time in my life that I've ever had, right? Like you're playing, you're playing games all day and you're making magic, which I loved and has become such an important part of my life. Um, and it was amazing. Um, but I really wanted to get a bigger scope of the business. Um, and, and you can't just stay in RD for years on end. Who would do that? <laughs> what? Like, like you, <laughs> you could do that, but I, I didn't do that. That's not for me. I moved around. Um, so I moved into brands. So I did. Um, so I, I, I was the brand. So I, I moved. I moved very quickly up that ladder, though, by the way. Um, so I went from associate to brand manager within like a year and then to senior brand manager, um, like within another like six months or something. Um, but I started running brand for all the license games. Um, and then um, I said very quickly moved into um, taking over the magic brand. Um, and uh I I did magic brand for oh, well over a decade, um, all the way up through. I was I was vice president of global brand strategy and marketing for um, for a little while. So what 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 kind of stuff does a brand manager do? So the audience who might not know what what that means. Yeah. So so the so the brand the brand folks um, were generally responsible for I'll, I'll just put in quotes like the business of magic, right? Um, so it was everything from planning out like you know kind of you know long term strategic planning to um, you know ha what actual SKUs are we selling? SKUs is the term for um, like the actual individual products. Um, like what's the configuration of the products? Um, and I don't mean like set like not cards like that's our indie's job. But this at the time um, it was really things like 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 one of the the first innovations I brought into the brand team um, was uh, dual decks. <laughs> by the way, um, because um, before dual decks. Um, Wizard had kind of stopped doing anything that wasn't a, a normal booster pack or like a starter deck, right? Um, like there was a couple things we had tried before, like like the anthologies collection and like a couple little things like that. But we had kind of gotten off of that. Um, and so um, one of the things I wanted to do was like was try to figure out like what are other ways we could package together magic cards in ways that are fun and exciting and like let people play out of the box and you know let them really enjoy things. So like the the elves versus goblins dual decks, like that that idea, like that was one of the things that that, that I brought in. Um that and then um shortly after that it was like the uh um um now I'm losing the name of it. The the fifteen card um edition with the dragons. From the vault? What do we, what do we, yeah, from the vault. 
and like from the vault, right? Um, so like I didn't design the decks or like what went into it, but the idea of like, how do we configure these products? Um, like that was one of the main things that the brand team did. Um, and so it was, what was the configuration of these products and then how much do they cost? And like, how many do we print? Um, and then how do we market them, right? Like, how do we tell people about them? Like, what's the preview campaign? Like, how, how do we bring it to market? Um, so those were, that's the main, that's the main job of, of the brand manager. So by the way, uh, uh, very recently I interviewed uh, Rachel Agnes, who is the current Magic Brand Manager. Um, yes. And so anyway, if you want, I mean, uh, they worked on the job at different times, but you get sort of yeah. sense of, of different and, people. And that, Rachel's uh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, but being Brand Manager Magic wasn't enough. You had to go on to do yet a different job. So what was your next job? I did. Okay. So, um, so in fall 2018, um, the beta of Magic the Gathering Arena came out. Um, and uh, it did way better than we thought it was going to, quicker than we thought it was going to. Like we had been working, you have to understand, we had been working on this next version of digital magic for like a really long time. A um, long time. <laughs> and um, it, was, it was a long, long time. Um, and we had finally broken through, like a, a big reason why we broke through was we, we, we got in kind of the right people um, to do the job really well. Um, and so we were able, we, we brought it into beta um, and we had always known that you know, competitive play was going to be a really big part of what Arena had to offer um, because competitive play had been part of the kind of heart of Magic, you know, since way, way, way back, right? Way back since, you know, the, the first Pro Tour was in 96 and, and even before then. Um, so we always knew that was going to be one that, that going into esports and, you know, taking Magic about competitive play and making the leap into bringing that into the digital space um, was something we always intended for, for MTG Arena. Um, and we expected to do it like, you know, when the game was out in full, you know, and, um, you know, set up a, a really nice um, transition and pull it in. Um, but but um, the beta did way better than we expected, way quicker than we expected. Um, and we decided that uh, we should capitalize on the momentum that we were getting um, and we should really push forward quicker than our original plans were. Um, and so in October 2018, um, I formed the esports team which the core of the esports team was really the, you know, the, the previous organized play team. Like, you know, we, we brought forward, um, you know, everybody who had spent, you know, so many years becoming experts in magic competitive play and really industry leading in terms of, you know, competitive gaming um, and, um, and, and set out to, you know, hire a bunch of people in from the digital gaming space um, and really create a robust esports program. Um, so we, we started the team in October, 2018 with the charter of, um, okay, uh, you're going to announce the program at the Game Awards um, in December, on December 6th. Um, and then the first big event is going to be at PAX East in Boston um, on March 28th. Um, like that, that was, that's, that's, that was the timeline. Right. <laughs> and so, the so, so the audience yeah. understands, like the original plan was like, we'd have a There's year five. or so to flesh things out yeah. and figure it out. Yes. And then it's like, yes. oh, did we say a, a year and a half? We meant couple months. <laughs> we meant six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we meant six months. So do it now. Do it now. I was like, oh, okay. All right. Um, so that was, and so, and, and I had to do it with, um, like I was like, I had to hire 10 people. Right. Like, so like I said, like we had the, you know, that, that, that team. Um, but then I had like 10 headcount to open to, to bring people in. Um, and, uh, it, and it was, it, it was pretty crazy. Um, I, I didn't sleep very much. Um, and, uh, the team worked, so hard really they, they just they work hard and it's such an amazing job um and so i i ran the esports program um uh, since you know from october 2018 um until just recently um and i have to say i am so proud of that team for pulling together so quickly and on such short notice um like really we were just running and like kind of building floor and we were running it um, and I mean, the, 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 the consumers could, could tell, right. They're like, we don't have all the answers we want. And it's like, no, we don't have the answers that you want. Um, we'll get them to you before, before the events actually happen, um, or before you need them, but it's not on the timeline they were used to because the, the players are really used to, you know, knowing like a full year in advance, like what the full schedule is and like how everything's going to work. And, and, um, we just didn't have that luxury of time. Um, so, um, so the team did a really amazing job, um, and really led up to, um, that last Worlds that we just had earlier this year in Hawaii, um, which I think hands down was, um, I, I, I really think it was the best Magic competitive event um, that we've, we've ever run. Like it was just spectacular. Um, the, the quality of the competition, the quality of the broadcast, um, the, the the ability for people to, to watch and cheer, the fact that we had a live audience for it. Um, 
it was uh it was it was a really spectacular and special show um, okay so paolo told me mm-hmm. oh, sorry, go ahead paolo told you sorry i was gonna say pa- paolo told me afterwards he was like you know elaine i've been playing this game a long time um i've never felt like you know like a superstar like as much as i did for the entire like lead up and you know conclusion of this tournament like it's just it, it was it was a different it was a different level and a different kind of elevation um and it, it was really great um and uh and then of course um very shortly thereafter um covid hit um and so i spent um you know march through june um just you know shutting events down around the world um and that was really super painful um it was it was really sad so before we move on, do you have any fun stories from your time of running esports? Oh, I have a lot of fun <laughs> stories. Um, I, I I will say that Paolo actually he owes me um, a a uh, a shave ice um, <laughs> one of the early nights um, in the in the weekend. Um, I, I went out um, for some shave ice at the end of the night, um, and I, I get in line at you know the shave ice place, and in front of me there just happens to be. Um, like a, like a bunch of magic players were there. So like Andre was there, um, and Paolo was there, and I think I think it was Matt Nass was there. Um, and I was like, oh hey, I'll I'll, I'll pay for your guys' shave ice. It's fine. I'll I'll put I'll put it on my on, on the, the the wizard's cart. Um, and Paolo was like, what? I, I just paid for mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay. He's like, well, that's okay, Elaine, though, right? He's like, if I win this thing, like, I'll owe you a shave ice. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Uh, so he won. He finished. I'm like, hey, Paolo, you owe me a shave ice. He's like, that I do. <laughs> so, so at some point, I'm going to need to contrive for Paolo and I to get some competition in Hawaii so that he can pay me back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm not too far from work here. So we're not done yet with your jobs. You have, no. uh, see, I, no, I, just started... I started, I started 25 years ago and like, what, what have I done? Yeah. That one thing. That's what I've done. You, you, you keep changing it up. You keep, uh, okay. So esports was not enough. So you move on. So what, what are you doing now? Yeah. So I just started a brand new thing. Um, it's way too early, um, to really talk much about it. Um, but I am the new head of studio, um, for a new wizards studio, um, so, uh, so what that means is, I mean, right now it's it, the studio is one. Um, it's me. Um, actually, it's one and a half because I got um, uh, one of our wonderful art directors who works on D and D, Emmy Tanji. She came in for um, she's doing a swap opportunity with me, so for like half time as an art director um, to help me get started. So I've got one and a half people in the studio right now, um, and uh, uh, we are, um, we're setting out to to make some kids games for you know kids six to twelve, um, which is exciting because that goes my roots a little bit back to you know when i was r&d and when i was running um all of those licensed um mostly kids games um and uh you know my elementary education degree and things like that so it feels it feels really nice kind of like how when i took over esports um it made me feel like i was kind of coming home to my roots and organized play um starting up the kids studio is making me kind of come back to my my next set of roots which is doing kids games i know so it all comes full circle to uh it all it really does <laughs> So, so to wrap up here, uh, so you have worked in events, you've worked in R and D, you've worked on brand, you've worked on esports. Now you're working on a, a brand new thing with kids games. What? So, w- when was your twenty year? You just hit your twenty year last year. 20, yeah, I'm, I'm at twenty one and a half now. Twenty one and a half. Okay. <laughs> Young and. <laughs> Young and. <laughs> So what what is your I just sort of a, a final takeaway from your all your time at Wizards and working on Magic? What what is your your thoughts to wrap up? Um. So my my, my thoughts are that um, uh, to me, uh, Wizards is a really special place. Um, it is um a, a place that is filled with people um, who are the most passionate and intelligent and um. Uh, good-natured um, people who really are motivated only by making the best possible experiences for our players. Um, whether it's Magic or D&D um, or Duel Masters or, or any of the other things that we've worked on, um, just the fact that I'm surrounded by by everyone um, virtually now, but <laughs> mostly in person for the last 21 years, um, who really care about making awesome experiences and game experiences um, that much um, is it's it's inspiring, um, and it's why I, I've been here for so long. Um, and I, I don't really see myself, um, you know, I'm not looking to go anywhere. 
anywhere else. <laughs> um, it's all it's also special because, um, like I said, my, my husband um, worked at Wizards for for 16 years um, before he became a, a stay home stay at home dad. Um, my daughter went through the daycare um, just like your kids did, um, and so like we spent you know the first five years of her life you know driving together as a family you know in in into the office space right dropping off the daycare you know com- coming back together um, and so really you know having having this full family experience it's it's you know magic and wizards has just been so much a part of my life. Well, it's I, I've, it's been great working with you all this time. I mean, not that we're stopping or anything, but it, it's been great working with you all this time and. Uh... It's kind of fun. One of the things that's been a real joy for me doing these interviews is I get to just reminisce with people that, you know, uh, from, from you know, all, all through the history of, uh, of working at Wizard. So, yeah. But, in, in one of your podcasts, do you ever talk about, you, do, do, do you talk about the, the Mad Farmer in any of your podcasts? I have. I have. Uh, I know who the Mad Farmer is, by the way. And it's you not do? one person. It's multiple people. Really? Yes. Yes. So for those who don't know, real, I, ha- I have talked about this in my podcast, but real quickly, for those who don't know, there was a series of things in R&D where people would do crazy things. One, uh, Henry's desk got dressed up with hay bales. Mine got dressed up with all these eggs. Uh, there was one with all these goldfish, like bowls of goldfish. And um, and for years, we've dubbed him the Mad Farmer because uh, it, was, it was all farm-related things. Um, and I recently learned... Uh, I so Brian Schneider. I did an interview with Brian Schneider. He owned up to doing one of them. I talked with Mike Donay. He owned up with doing one of them. It was oh. a, it was a, and, and we think Selinker did the third one. So it was three oh. different people. I, mean, I always expected Selinker, but yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> so anyway, for the for the by the way, whoever's been following me, I've talked about the Mad Farmer in my articles on podcasts. So anyway. Uh, there's been this evolution, but the funniest thing was I had Brian Schneider on. He admitted to doing one of them on the podcast. So anyway, so that's amazing. Yes. Schneider, man. All but, right. But anyway, uh, all the fun. See, guys, you should listen to my interviews. All sorts of fun things that can happen. So <laughs> anyway, I, I am now at work. So we all know what that means. It means this is the end of my drive to work. So instead of talking magic, it's time for me to be making magic. So thank you, Elaine, for joining us. Thank you for having me, Mark. I really appreciate it. It was super fun to reminisce. And everybody else, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.